one way, one example of this is that host A may be my computer at home, for example, or or even in the office, but say the computer at home connecting via Wi-Fi to my local network and the router X is the, the router that connects my home to the internet, so via my uh, internet service provider. So this internet link here, even though it's small, it represents everyone in, in, the, in the world, all the other networks. And let's say router Y is the router of the server that I'm trying to contact, host B. So we want, we're looking at how do we keep our data confidential across the entire path. And we saw application security or application layer level security provides end-to-end -end security. And similar with transport layer security, it's end-to-end. -end. And then we arrived at network level security. It can be end-to-end, -end, but we said that the problem is that it requires the configuration at the, of the operating system usually to, to make it work. It's a little bit harder to set up. But we said that IPsec is commonly used in tunneling mode or network level security in tunneling mode. So let's explain that and, and first explain this example and then see how it works. So again, let's say that router Y and host B are inside SIT and I'm at home and I want to access the SIT network as if I'm inside SIT using the network but doing it from home. Then I want to access the SIT network but I don't want other people to be able to intercept the data when I access that network so we need some form of security. So one way we could set it up is that on my computer at home I set up IPsec in a mode that allows it to create a secure connection to the SIT router, router Y. And using IPsec, there are other technologies as well, but in this case using IPsec. And what that does is when I send data, IPsec at this point will do the encryption and the authentication techniques to ensure that across the red path the data is protected. But when I want to send to host B, what my computer does, let's say I want to access the website on host B. Host B is inside SIT, host A is at home, but I want to access, access that website as if I'm accessing it from inside SIT. So if the IPsec has been set up correctly, what happens is that I access that host B using its address and I would create a packet, my application would create a packet with some data to send to host B and if we looked at the details of the source IP address and the destination IP address, the source is my host, host A, and the destination is host B. So I'm sending so that from A to B. So I've summarized the source and destination here. And an IP datagram is created, source A, destination B. But what IPsec does in this setup is that it takes that IP datagram and puts it inside another IP datagram. And this is the, the process of tunneling. It puts it inside another IP datagram which looks like the one down the bottom here. It's the original one, but really it attaches another header that says the source is A, it's still coming from A, but the destination is router Y. And how does this how does IPsec know to send to router Y? Because it was set up. We said there must be some configuration of the IPsec to say the other endpoint is router Y. So it puts the original IP datagram inside another one, creating a, a, a tunneled datagram. And the inner one is encrypted. So that provides our protection of the data. So IPsec not only attaches that extra header, but encrypts everything inside. So what happens, then this datagram is sent via my host, and it will be delivered to router Y, because it will be sent via my Wi-Fi, the Ethernet, it will get to my router X, and it will be sent across the Internet using the normal IP routing. Destination is Y, therefore the Internet will deliver that datagram to router Y. Router Y will receive that. Anyone 
between host A and router Y, if they intercept that datagram, they know it's from A, they know it is to Y, but they don't know what's inside because it's encrypted. So they cannot see the data that I'm sending to the, the server. It's delivered to router Y because the destination was Y. And then IPsec configured on router Y realizes, OK, this is a special packet. It's delivered to Y, but it's an IPsec packet. So what the router at Y does is that it removes the outer header, decrypts the inner part, and we're left with the original IP datagram, which says from A to B, send this data. And router Y then delivers that datagram here, of course, to B, the destination. So the original datagram that the application at host A created, A to B with the data, is eventually delivered to host B and received and processed. So the data is encrypted just from host A to router Y. It's not across this last segment. But that may be OK, because this last segment, let's say, is inside SIT. And I know no one can intercept that across that Ethernet segment inside SIT. So I may trust that. What I may be more concerned about is that the people on the internet cannot intercept and, and view my data. That's what I want to uh, stop. So that works in that case. Why this, as opposed to end-to-end -end encryption? Why not this? Well, if we want to use IPsec or this end-to-end uh, -end security in this case, we need to set up those two entities that use IPsec. So in this case, I need to set up my host and host A, my computer, and the host at S inside SIT to use IPsec. That requires some configuration. And if I wanted to connect to a different host inside SIT, host C, I would need to configure that one as well. And if I wanted to connect to any of the 100 different hosts inside SIT, C, D, E, F, many others, I'd need to configure them separately. But in this tunneling mode, what I do is, or what the computer center does, is they configure the router for SIT to use IPsec. They just set up one device, and it allows us from, say, our home computer, which we still need to configure, to access securely to there. And the hosts inside SIT don't need to be set up to support the security. Makes the, the management of the network much simpler. We don't need to do anything special to all the computers inside the SIT, just the one router we need to set up at the compromise being we don't have security between those internal hosts and that router. But that's often not a problem. So that's an alternative for using network level security. And this process of putting one IP datagram inside another, so this A to B with data is an IP datagram. A to B means the, the header containing the source and destination IP addresses. Then we put that inside another datagram where the data is the original packet encrypted and the header says it's now from A to Y. This is called tunneling. Tunneling is usually putting uh, a, a packet from one protocol inside the same protocol or even in, in a higher level uh, protocol. Normally, when we create a packet, say an application level packet, we put it inside a lower layer protocol packet when we send it. We put the HTTP message inside a TCP packet. We put the TCP packet inside an IP datagram. That's the normal procedure. Tunneling in this case involves putting a network layer packet, an IP packet, inside another network layer packet, another IP packet. And it's all commonly used for this security purpose. So that allows me to connect securely from, say, my home computer to all the computers inside SIT with minimal setup inside SIT. A further extension of that one is, OK, at home I have multiple computers, my phone, my laptop, my PC, 
rather than having to set up all the hosts inside my home to use IPsec, set up my own router to do it. Set up my router at home, router X, to support IPsec and create a tunnel through to the router inside SIT, router Y. No setup of the hosts inside SIT, no special setup of the hosts at home. Only the two devices, the two routers, need to be set up to support this security feature. And the result is that host A creates a normal IP datagram, destination B, nothing is encrypted. It's sent normally across the Wi-Fi, across the, my local LAN to my router, but then my router is the, the, the start point of the tunnel. So it takes that datagram and this IPsec will be set up to realize anything from A to B, we must take that, encrypt it, put an outer header on side that that says let's send this from X to Y across the internet. And that datagram is sent across the internet, destination Y, it will eventually be delivered to router Y. IPsec will receive it, realize, okay, this is an IPsec datagram, remove the outer header, decrypt what's inside. What we're left is a packet from A to B with the data, router Y sends that on to B and we receive it. So. Same approach, using tunneling. In this case, we can support security across the internet for all the hosts on the source network and all the hosts on the destination network. So not just host A, but other hosts here. It will also work. Of course, nothing's protected across the internal networks. There's no encryption here. So we must trust that portion of the network. We only have encryption across the internet, which is usually what we're looking for. If we may trust our home internal network, but we don't trust the external networks. This is called a virtual private network. Effectively, from our, say, home network to the internal SIT network, across the internet, the internet is a public network. Many people use it. It's not just for one organization. It's a public network. But we don't want others to see our data. We want our data to be private. So we want a private network to connect from router X to Y. We can't afford to build our own private network between those two routers. So we have a virtual one where really what we do is we just encrypt the data between those two points. So we call that a virtual private network, a VPN. This one's also considered a, a virtual private network, a VPN. Any questions on these, this use of IPsec or generally network layer security for s virtual private networks? Which, which one's better? Of all the solutions we've seen for security, application, transport, network, which one's better? Which one are you going to use? Right, there's, there's no answer. We, what I want you to be aware is the different trade-offs, the advantages and disadvantages of each. So you choose the solution for, based upon what you require, your requirements. So let's go back and, and summarize those differences. So with respect to a virtual private network, so the approach of using IPsec here to create not end-to-end -end security, but just over a segment of the path. This is using the concept called tunneling, where we put packets from one layer inside packets usually of the same layer or even a higher layer. So we put an IP packet inside another IP packet. We don't normally do that. That's 
what we do with tunneling, or it, specifically we put an IP packet inside an IPsec packet. With tunneling, there's other ways. IPsec is not the only solution. There are others. And especially for virtual private networks, there's other technologies called PPTP, the point-to-point -point tunneling protocol, and layer two tunneling protocol, L2TP. And there's another one which is slightly different, which uses TLS called OpenVPN. And there are a few others as well. So IPsec is not the only technology for tunneling. And in most cases, to do tunneling with any of these technologies, it requires some configuration of the devices, the endpoints of the tunnel where it starts and finishes. And that, that can be a disadvantage. That is, the, the, the user needs to set something up, whereas with application-level security and transport-level security, usually the user doesn't have to do anything different. But with tunneling, we can provide the su support and configuration on routers, and, and therefore it doesn't need to be set up on all the individual hosts. It's done on a router that covers an entire subnet. And we see it doesn't provide end-to-end -end encryption. We must trust some segments in the path. In this case, my home host, so the host inside SIT, for example, host B, then I trust the internal SIT wired network it's hard for someone to get access. They need access to the building to do so. I trust my home wired network. Someone has to get inside my home to, to intercept that. But I don't trust Wi-Fi usually. You already, already know how to monitor other people's Wi-Fi traffic. It's very easy. You can sit outside someone's home and intercept their packets because wireless is a broadcast uh, medium. So sometimes we want to have extra protection across the wireless link. And that leads to the last approach, link level security. We do the encryption across individual links. And this really only makes sense in practice across wireless links. So an example which you probably have used is that in Wi-Fi or wireless LAN, there's different encryption techniques that it will encrypt your your packets across the wireless link only. WPA, Wi-Fi Protected Access, is one common technology. An older one was WEP, and there are a few variations or different versions. So what WPA does is that, ignoring the other uh, security mechanisms, we send a packet, your Wi-Fi wi device, the wireless chip inside your laptop or your phone, encrypts that before it sends it across the link and the access point that receives that wireless packet decrypts and then sends on unencrypted across the rest. So link level encryption or link level security is only across a single link and it's commonly used in wireless links because wireless links are much easier for someone to intercept than wired links. Of course it provides no security for the rest of the path. So we can't rely on that. But if we combine this with, say, this approach, then we'd be reasonably secure from host A to host B. I'd have protection across my wireless link. It's hard. It's easy for someone to intercept. So having security mechanisms there is important so that they cannot see my data. Across my wired link inside my home or inside SIT, I can trust that to some extent. Someone needs physical access to that to intercept. But across the internet, I want some encryption because I don't trust all the internet service providers between my home and SIT. So we can combine these different mechanisms to achieve the aims that we want. Link level security is used in other wireless technologies as well. Bluetooth, Zigbee, and others have, uh, your mobile phones even have forms of link level security. It works for all applications, all transport protocols, all network protocols. Link level security, that's good, but it only works for that link. 
And of course, usually in the internet, we have to traverse many different links. So it's not good for end-to-end -end security. And it requires configuration of both endpoints. If you want to use WPA, then you need to set a password in your home access point and inside your, your device, your mobile phone or laptop. So it requires some manual configuration to work. So that finishes those four different approaches for where we can implement security mechanisms in, for network or internet security. Application level security, build it into your application. You have control over that as the application developer, but you may have to um, spend a lot of effort to do that for your application, which is duplicating a lot of effort that others have done. Transport level security, very similar, but use the security mechanisms built into the operating system, into the transport layer. You don't have to develop them yourself as the application developer. Both of them provide end-to-end -end security. Network level security, IPsec, can be used end-to-end, -end, but it's not so common because it requires manual intervention at both endpoints, but is commonly used for virtual private networks to connect one network securely to another network. And link level security mainly applicable for wireless networks or wireless links. That finishes this topic. We're not going to cover secure email. That's, we're going to skip that one. So we've got time to cover one other thing for this course. So some of the trade-offs we saw were that, okay, the different approaches make our application simpler or more complex. If we have application-level security, we as the application developer must make our application more complex. Whether they provide host-to-host -host or end-to-end -end encryption or not, and how much su support or setup is needed from the user's part in setting up and configuring the devices. There are many different security protocols that we haven't talked about, especially for VPNs. I said IPsec is one, but there are others as well.